What is up, everybody? Welcome back to LV Intel. Starting off here by getting a new magic attack, which I somehow didn't use there. <laughs> That's it. The uh, shockwave, or whatever you want to call it, is actually pretty useful, as you might imagine. And uh, we've got some more Cthulhu beasts on this uh, level, or rather, Lovecraftian beasts. That thing is, uh, well, Saiga? Saiga? I don't know how to pronounce Lovecraftian creatures, so apologies. There's this really strange mechanic on this level where you uh, jump in the water and it like propels you towards the surface like that, but ooh, isn't that satisfying? I like that. Anyways, there's a, uh, yeah, it's a weird mechanic with the water. There's some uh, platforming sections, some stuff where you have to dodge spikes by, you know, hurrying through after breaking the platforms. It's kind of complicated. Fortunately, you don't instantly die when you touch the spikes, otherwise this would be very, very difficult. The uh, controls are not exactly the most precise thing I've ever seen in this game, as uh, I think is readily apparent here. But they're not bad. Like I said in the previous video, definitely better than uh, Ernest Evans. And you'll notice that we're fortunately given uh, enough health pickups to uh, to get through it. Don't ask me how that jump works, I still don't understand it to this day. There's no jump down, so <laughs> try again. Gotta admit, though, this part's kind of cool. Uh. This is uh, one of the more difficult levels, as you can probably tell. However, it's not the most difficult. Oh no, not by a long shot. It's okay, though. We'll get to that. I guess I didn't mention it yet. This is the final part. We're just doing it in two parts. But what's funny is that, uh, as we'll see, I mentioned last time that the difficulty doesn't really scale uh, as you would expect. And especially as you start getting uh, new magic attacks, some of the stuff later in the game is way easier. And also some of it is way harder. But you know. You gotta give him credit, though, definitely for coming up with sort of inventive ways to use the magic. Here's that weird water mechanic. You're just instantly, like, propelled upwards. So you gotta be careful, because that part, you may have noticed, will send you back to the previous area. So we got some sort of weird puzzle section, basically. <laughs> Anyways, we made it. So this thing is based off an illustration of a uh, minion of Karakal, something along those lines. And if you look at the uh, the picture of this thing, I mean, it is exactly taken from it. They were more than uh, heavily inspired, you could say. I mean, literally Cthulhu was in the previous episode, right? Remember, Vincent DeMarco is actually Al Capone, and also he's supposed to have a cigar in his mouth, but... You know, that'd be bad for the kitties. She's very persuasive, apparently, because Al Capone's like, hmm, yeah, that seems reasonable. I guess I won't try to revive Hostor. Ooh, the Grand Canyon. All right. Well, we've already been to Mount Rushmore, so I'm sure 
based on how accurate that portrayal was, this will be totally accurate as well. Hmm. Maybe not. So, the most difficult enemy in the entire game. The stupid little bat. Not that thing. That thing is like a night gaunt, basically, from uh, Lovecraft mythology. But no, these, these stupid bats. They will follow you. They'll overlap your hitbox. And you can't actually hit them while they're touching you because of the way that your hitboxes and your weapon hitboxes work. So what you have to do is basically dodge out of the way, then hit them, but they're constantly trying to track you and will just continuously deal damage. Because again, no iframes. It's rather horrifying. Uh, your guess is as good as mine on that one. I love these statues though, they're hilarious. Definitely should look into getting some of those for my next uh, next interior design project. By the way, if you think that the bats on this level are bad, oh, just give it time. Look at this nonsense. By the way, it doesn't help that uh, the enemies tend to just respawn. But anyways, enough about that. We got some new magic. Ekasuporosion, you might say. Again, I, I do love that they didn't actually make the explosion the right size. They just decided to upscale the sprite. It's kind of hilarious. You know, it's really not that hard. I should be able to... Alright, that'll do. Alright, so this thing is basically inspired by the Yog sothoth Supposedly it is an outer god, which looks like several connected globes. Or so I'm told on the page that I'm reading right now. Surprisingly enough, I I know a little bit of Lovecraft, but not a lot. I, it's something I definitely would like to get into more. The uh, tricky part about this boss fight is you'll notice the boomerangs actually get stuck in the globes, or the bubbles. And the uh, main body can't be hurt by anything other than the boomerangs, so... Obviously there's a mini-puzzle there. Okay, now, here he is. The man, the myth, Ernest Evans. Now... The most amazing part about this, I mentioned this in the previous video, was that this is actually the first game in the series, even though it's uh, Ernest Evans was a prequel to it. That means this is literally the first time we've ever seen Ernest Evans, so we have no idea who he is, and it's just this random Indiana Jones dude that shows up. And I find that just incredibly amusing. Anyways, he's going to take care of Al Capone for us. Now I just wish I was playing as Ernest, but what are you going to do? Anyways, we're moving on to do a Flame Mammoth stage. How's that for a reference? The best part about it is that there are any number of 16-bit games that have conveyor belts. I could have said Metropolis Zone. I could have said plenty of things. However, none of them were quite this irritating with the... Uh, and chunk going down. It's basically impossible to not get hit. Fortunately, it doesn't do that much damage, so hey. That's a pretty standard conveyor belt section, I would say. Ooh, and we just unlocked our final magic attack. This one is ridiculously overpowered. Look at that. And now... We have a matching game. Or rather, the shell game, essentially. Kind of weird that you get this uber magic attack, but anyways, it's fine. Literally, it's the shell game. You just follow the box, find the uh, Migo, Migo, Lovecraft names. And if you guess wrong, then 
projectiles shoot out and hurt you. And if you guess right enough times, you defeat it. Again, I mean, you gotta give him credit for trying, right? You would think that the uh, magic attack homing in would help you find where the thing is, but it actually doesn't. So they thought that far ahead. Oh, gotcha. Oh, and now, our good buddy Siegfried. We're going to be seeing a lot more of him in the final game in the series. Kind of a weird character. A really weird character, in fact. But we'll get to that. Yes, we know that too, because we saw it in episode one. Personal space, dude. Anyways. Yeah, Henry is supposedly the uh, successor to that sorcerer dude that we killed in Ernest Evans. But, as you probably noticed, the story is kind of convoluted. He, well, he didn't do much, but I guess he did something. Now we're entering uh, Storm Eagle's stage. Or Wing Fortress Zone, or I'm going to stop now. But as you can see, this magic attack is... <laughs> I totally forgot about the gunners flying by the screen. Oh, that's hilarious. Woo! <laughs> you know that's awesome. And now the hardest boss in the game. I lie. All you have to do is use your new uh, found magic attack. And there you go. Done. Like I said, difficulty scaling is kind of weird. Yeah, I'm guessing that's our antagonist. Yeah, honestly, I didn't expect him to break off from you that easily either. We literally just asked him to, and he said okay. Empire State Building. A shrine which we have built? What? So remember, Empire State Building. That was a shrine that Hoster's Cult built. And now the most miserable level in the entire game. Honestly, this one level almost makes the game not worth playing. However, it is still worth playing, and I still quite like it. The bats. The bats do not let up. Just look at this nonsense. And you will die in about 10 seconds if you don't play this very carefully, but also very fast. Like, I'm trying to charge up my magic attack so I can sprint through, but they're spawning in so fast that it's not even possible. On top of that, we have these weird door puzzles with levers and... Ah. Basically, this level sucks. And by the way, you get very limited health pickups throughout this entire level. So don't expect to uh, get much help there. In fact, uh, during practice runs, I could make it through the rest of the game no problem without dying, but man, I had to practice this one a lot before I got through. And even at that point, some of it is kind of just luck, <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest. I mean, the good news is it doesn't really matter if you die, but as I've stated before, if I'm going to do a uh, Let's Play, I want it to be a deathless run. Also, we get some slowdown on this one. It's okay, though. 
gives you a little bit more time to react, I guess. By the way, those uh, snake enemies are based off an uh, enemy that has one of the most creative names yet, the uh, Serpent People. <laughs> Oh, all right. Literally, like, you get stuck and can't even get out the gate at some points. Fortunately, the enemy pathfinding is not the best. Stop. Yeah, how's that for basic problem solving with the, uh door puzzles. By the way, the other, well, the only real limitation of this magic attack is that it will home in on whichever enemy it pleases. So you won't necessarily get it to hit the enemy that you want it to. Meaning that if your dude is in front of you, but it's homing in on somebody below you, it's not going to be all that helpful. Ouch. Just stab me in the face a couple times. It's fine. Anyway, we've almost made it to the exit. By the way, they put in uh, one of the most sadistic things in this uh, final section. I think we have a health pick around here somewhere, though, don't we? Let's see. That down there wants me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mistakes were made. Well, you know what? This uh, level is nothing if not tense. Yes, it only restored a tiny little bit and barely helped. Hmm. Oh man, basic problem solving. Alright, and with that we're officially as smart as like a monkey or maybe a raven. Alright, ready for like one of the most sadistic things ever? If you fall down here, it drops you all the way back to the beginning. So don't miss. Alright. Of course we get no health restore for the final boss. But now it's time to take on Hoster, him, her, its, self. And actually, just like in uh, Ernest Evans, it's kind of cool. I guess. And also kind of like an Ernest Evans, just kind of waves around like a wacky waving arm flailing inflatable tube man. And, uh, sorry, inflatable tube person, we want to be inclusive here. And uh, it's kind of hard to hit. Not to mention you take quite a bit of damage from each of those projectiles, which are basically impossible to avoid. So it's sort of like a an endurance match. You dodge as best you can and try to do as much damage as you can. But of course I wouldn't be posting this if I had died here, so I guess that takes some of the suspense out of it. Fortunately, I don't really have to aim when I'm using this magic attack. Gotcha. And ooh. Yeah, if you thought that there was going to be some, uh, oh, we saved Restiana kind of situation, uh, nope.
That is pretty grim. I must say. Well, everybody, <laughs> with that uh, uplifting note, actually it is uplifting because there's Ernest. Ernest is the best. Anyways, we're going to call it for this episode, which is the end of the game, so that makes sense. I will be back uh, relatively soon with a playthrough of the final game in the series, which unfortunately is also kind of the worst game in the series. Not because it's bad, but just because it's kind of boring. But anyways, we'll get to that later. By the way, my boy uh, Sakuraba Motoi in the credits. Remember the guy that did the uh, soundtrack for Dark Souls? So you might say that this is the Dark Souls of 16-bit platformers. And Siegfried's going to walk away all edgy-like. Anyways, everybody, I hope you have enjoyed. I will leave you with this. See you on the next one.